at St. Edward's Episcopal Church on this second Sunday after Pentecost. We are glad that you are here as we worship our Lord Jesus Christ. Our worship continues with Holy Eucharist Rite 1. It's found on page 323 in the Book of Common Prayer, page 323. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us, for Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O Lord, we beseech Thee, make us to have a perpetual fear and love of Thy holy name. For thou never failest to help and govern those whom thou hast set upon the sure foundation of thy loving kindness, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah. I was ready to be sought out by those who did not ask, to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that did not call on my name. I held out my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good, following their own devices, a people who provoke me to my face continually sacrificing in gardens and offering incense on bricks, who sit inside tombs and spend the night in secret places, who eat swine's flesh with broth of abominable things in their vessels, who say, keep to yourself, do not come near me, for I am too holy for you. These are a smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all day long. See, it is written before me, I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will indeed repay into their laps their iniquities and their ancestors' iniquities together, says the Lord, because they offered incense on the mountains and reviled me on the hills. I will measure into their laps full payment for their actions. Thus says the Lord, as the wine is found in the cluster, and they say, do not destroy it, for there is a blessing in it, so I will do for my servant's sake, and not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and from Judah inheritors of my mountains. My chosen shall inherit it, and my servants shall settle there. The word of the Lord. We will be reading Psalm 22, verses 18 through 27 by half verse. You may follow along in the prayer book or on the screens above. And we'll say the refrain at the end. 
Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword. My life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth. My wretched body from the horns of wild wolves. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, neither does he hide his face from them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be Our second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian, for in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself for Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. The word of the Lord. Jesus, clothed 
and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen him told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to the Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, happy Father's Day. Happy, happy Father's, Father's Day. Day. And good morning. Well, is it hot enough for you out there this week? You know what that means? It's a reminder of what awaits us if we don't follow God's commandments. <laughs> Today is the second Sunday after Pentecost, and it is on this Sunday that we make the complete transition to the season after Pentecost, which for this year will be for the next 22 Sundays. Our linens on the altar, the pulpit, the lectern are green, and the clergy vestments are green. Father Mark looks good in green, doesn't he? Or I prefer Mets blue and orange, I think. There you go. And liturgical colors of green represents green surroundings we see in God's good earth. And the green refers to growth of the Holy Spirit of God within us. But sadly, I have to say that, but sadly, the season after Pentecost is often called ordinary times. And according to Mr. Webster, ordinary means boring, dull, predictable, everyday home. And you know, I'm not sure about this season being ordinary times in our church. Because each week we hear through scripture, our liturgy, sermons, and songs about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Father, grace, mercy, righteousness, and Jesus and his interactions with the people throughout the different regions and cultures and Jesus' clever use of the parables to teach us about the kingdom of God. Not to mention his miracles and the growth of his disciples. And we experience his unconditional love. And how the Holy Spirit intervenes in our lives and guides us and spiritually enables us to pray. In fact, in the fall for ABC, Father Mark is having this series on the Holy Spirit. So stay tuned for that announcement. Ordinary times during the season after Pentecost? Nah, not true. It is exciting times. And for the lesson read during the season of Pentecost, in particular the epistle, or the second reading from the New Testament, will be from the same letter two to four Sundays in a row. Then the lesson will go to another letter for the same duration of Sundays. In this year, year C, the letter chosen to begin the season after Pentecost is from Paul's letter to the Galatians. And Father Mark and I made an agreement that I would preach this Sunday on Paul's letter to the Galatians, and next Sunday, Father Mark will preach on the same letter, but a different lesson. lesson. But you know, as I look back, I got a heck of a deal for me. I got the better bargain because I do not have to preach about a herd of swines being possessed, rushing energetically over a steep bank into a lake and drowning. Thank be to God, I don't have to do that. So good call, Father Mark, you're right on, as always. So I'd like to take some time to provide the background behind Paul's letter to the Galatians. And I'm hoping this will provide a better understanding about the lesson heard today. 
Paul visited Galatia on three of his missionary journeys, which are throughout Asia Minor. And we can read about this in the book of Acts of the Apostles. And these journeys span approximately 10 years. And Paul always had someone of notability with him. He did not travel alone. And during his missionary journeys, they brought to the people and to the churches the good news of Jesus Christ, with the mission for them to baptize these people and convert them to Christianity. But something developed as a result of these missionary journeys that was unique. The Jewish people in these regions, after hearing Paul, wanted to become Christians. And they did, and were known as Judaizers. And Galatia was no different. Both Jews and Gentile, after hearing the good news of Jesus from Paul and his group, were baptized and became followers of the teachings of Jesus. But as soon as Paul moved on from Galatia to continue his missionary journey, a change took place. The practice that was in place by Paul for the Gentiles becoming Christians was changed by the Judaizers. The Judaizers began to mandate to the Gentiles that first they must become Jewish before becoming Christian. Meaning they had to conform to the covenants of Abraham and the laws of Moses. And once this requirement was accomplished, they could be baptized and become Christians. When Paul found out about this, he was not happy. He was not a happy camper. He knew this was not the way Jesus wanted the Gentiles to become Christians. He knew that it was by repentance and through the living waters of baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Paul's concern was justified because he knew that Gentiles would not tolerate becoming Jewish. Therefore, they would not become Christians. And most importantly, not knowing who Jesus is and to learn his teachings and be part of their faith and their life. But is this not ironic? Here we have Paul, who was a Pharisee, a Jewish scholar who used to persecute Christians. Now he's defending the Gentiles. They're turning their lives over to Jesus, not even considering to have them follow the laws and customs that were near and dear to him and he defended before. And to bring closure to this issue, Paul often called the defense of the Gentile mission, went to Jerusalem's conference that occurred in the city of Syria and Antioch, and those in attendance at this conference with Peter, James, the brother of Jesus, Titus, and some Pharisees from Judea. And after much debate, they realized Paul was right. And anyone who wanted to become Christians did not first have to become Jewish. And all this took place and can be found in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 15. Now somewhere around this time is when Paul wrote his letter to the Galatians. And by the way, this is the first letter written by Paul that has been preserved to this very day. Now you would think this favorable decision, Paul would be elated and express a happy tone in his letter to the Galatians. Well. Not exactly. In fact, in the first chapter, he admonished the Gentiles when he wrote, and I quote, I'm astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. He indeed set them straight as to whose instructions they were to follow and how they are to do this and why. And the why was in the name of Jesus. Now let us draw attention to the lessons heard today from Galatians. Paul is more mellow, he is explicit, yes, conciliatory, reverts back to his skills of teaching, explaining to the people of Galatia, this is where you were, this is where you want to be, why and how. And Paul begins with a statement, 
before faith came. Now, who can that be? Who can that be? It's Jesus. And Paul wrote from a Jewish perspective when he stated, we were in prison and guarded until faith would be revealed. Now, this appears to be an anonymous statement, being in prison and guarded. But Paul is writing a metaphor. He is writing to explain that what was in place for the people at that time prior to the arrival of faith. And the faith is Jesus. That under the laws of Moses, the people became prisoners of their own sin. Like they were being criminals, completely bound and surrounded by sin. And to make worse, they were guarded by the sentry of sin. With no hope of being pardoned for the forgiveness of their sins. But we know what happened. Pardon and forgiveness of sin did happen for the people of Galatia, and it continues to happen for us today by justification, being declared righteous by and through our faith, our faith in Jesus Christ, and being his follower, and glorifying and magnifying his name every day as we walk with him on the road of salvation. And why? Why is this? Because we believe. We believe he is the way. Just as we heard in scripture, when Jesus being questioned by Thomas and said to him and the other disciples and to us, and I quote, I am the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. Meaning we are to align ourselves, our lives, to the ways of Jesus. We are to be his followers and believe in him. To have faith in him and know Jesus is the truth. Then Paul introduces a phrase, children of God, as he did in Romans, 1 and 2 Corinthians, Ephesians, Philippians. You have to say he likes something about being children of God and writing about it. And Paul writes that we are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus because we are baptized into Christ. And during those times, people being baptized were immersed in water with their clothing on. And he makes a point about this by writing the person that clothed himself in Christ. Thus everyone is the same. And this is how he expresses. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For all of you, all of you are one in Christ Jesus. That is a powerful statement but validates what we witness at our baptism held here in St. Edwards. Baptized by the water in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, sealed by the Holy Spirit, and being marked as Christ's own forever. Being owned by Christ puts us in, and everyone else who has been baptized regardless of who they are. For all of us are one in Christ, through Jesus, by our baptism. And finally, the end of the lesson is not what I would expect, but is a perfect bow on the package for this lesson from Galatians. And Paul goes back to Genesis, something that took place 2,000 years earlier from his time. And he's referencing that the people in Galatia and us, regardless of who we are, maybe, we are all offsprings of Abraham because of the promise, which is the covenant between Abraham and God. Abraham did not waver when God had told him to prepare to sacrifice his son. And all of a sudden, did not have to when a ram appeared out of nowhere. And because of his loyalty and trust and belief in God, the angel appeared and said to Abraham, I will greatly bless you 
And I will greatly multiply their seed as the stars of the heavens and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your seed of all nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. This was a covenant between God and Abraham. And this was a promise that Paul referred to in verse 29. And is who we are today, offsprings of Abraham. I began my sermon for this lesson from Galatians with a quote from Paul when he said, Before faith came, and faith was Jesus. And then once faith, faith was revealed, we are justified by faith through salvation, and that is our Lord Jesus. And my sermon ended with the story of Abraham, the father of faith, who trust in God was immeasurable and to be an inspiration for all of us. But, you know, we learn throughout Scripture, Old and New Testament, in our liturgy, in our hymns, in our prayers, in our lives, in our actions, the importance of having faith and to trust God. When I look around this congregation, and as I stand here this morning, I can see it on your faces because it glows the love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ. And you trust and you believe and your faith has made you strong. But under our watch, as we go about our daily lives, each one of us has the role to keep the knowledge of faith and what it means and how one can enjoy what it brings to them and how it can help in a time of need. We are responsible to keep faith alive and be ready and be ready to reach out, to teach to others and remind them why having faith in God and his son Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit is the only way, the only way to exist. And our hope is that the tiny mustard seed that I put in front of the, in the narthex, as you see, we go out, that you plant it in them and it will begin to grow and they will feel Christ within them. And as their faith grows, so will the glow on their face. And it will become brighter and brighter, such as I see in your faces today, until they too will experience and understand how great the Lord is. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Your service continues with the prayers of the people. 
be found on the screens above or page 328 in your book, A Common Prayer. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church and the world. Almighty and living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people, receive these our prayers which we offer unto divine majesty, beseech it to be continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael presiding bishop, Gregory our diocesan bishop, Bishop Dorsey, Mark our priest, Father John, Father Bradley, Deacon Mickey, and Deacon Kim, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth that true and lively word, and rightly do, duly administer thy holy sacrament. As the search process for the new bishop has started, I would like to say the following prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of every good gift, look graciously on your church, and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a bishop for the Diocese of Central Florida, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for your people and equip us for our ministries through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we lift up in prayer today the parishes of St. Jude's Church, Orange City, Cathedral Church, St. Luke, Orlando, and All Souls Episcopal Church, Horizon West, and our supported missionaries. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, especially this congregation here present, and for our parish members, Peter and Patty Hill, that meet heart and do reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Receive thee also to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joseph, our president, and Ron, our governor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Today we celebrate Father's Day, and I'd like to say the following prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in Scripture we learn that you are Abba, Father, and we thank you for your grace and love. And on this special day we give thanks for our dads and everything they have done for us. We ask you to continue to give them strength, wisdom, patience, inspiration, and to love their family, and to remember those who do not have children of their own, but are mentors to those seeking love, encouragement, mentoring, and you. And remember our dads who have been called home to their heavenly place in your kingdom, but alive in our memory, and whose gifts of knowledge and love is with us each and every day. We give thanks to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, remember those who give themselves to the service of others, doctors, nurses, teachers, and all who minister to those in need and provide the necessities of life. Especially remember those who are in the military and first responders associated with this parish family. TJ, Kyle, Scott, Ian, Elizabeth, Laura, Matt, Robert, Trevor, William, Colin, Steve, Nicholas, Zachary, Christian, Victor, Kent, Clay, and Bradley. Open the Lord, open the eye, O Lord, open the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works that rejoice in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor those names on our parish prayer list, remembering Bill, Noah, Matt, Roseanne, Mickey, 
Ann, Michael, Doug, Jerry, Harper, Tom, and the victims and families of the, of the shooting that took place at St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in Festiva Hills, Alabama. And anyone like to remember at this time? And all those in a transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any adversity. And we give thanks for the blessings of this life, especially those celebrating their birthday this week, remembering Pam Bo and Charles Lesage. And for those celebrating the wedding anniversary, Father Mark and Tara Laffer, Randy and Luann Wiseman, Bob and Carol Minkle, Jerry and Jean Haddock, Sean and Mona Austin, and Steve and Mary Lou Nichols. And we also give thy, bless thy, thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially remembering Alice Christensen, Dorothy Lambert, Donald Ivins, Carol Burr, Sam Homage, Helen Sutter, Richard Sawyer, Jacqueline Mann, Keith Farrell, and Denise Davis. Beseeching thee then grant them continual growth in our love and service, and then grant us grace to follow the good example of the Virgin Mary, St. Edwards, and all thy saints, that with them may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name through jesus christ our lord amen almighty god our heavenly father who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. 
Well, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. There is, as, as you leave today, um, a, a dove pen, a little lapel pen, and uh, that's a gift from the church for, for all the men here today. The, uh, a few other announcements. Well, first of all, welcome to any visitors and newcomers we have. Thank you for being here today. It's uh, good to have you worship with us. In the narthex where you came in, uh, there's a notebook back there, and if you could put your name and your address on the paper on that notebook, and that way we'll have a record of your visit and we can send you some information about our church. But thank you for being here today and worshiping. Um, Heart Church Hall will be, is continued to be closed for renovation. This is the second Sunday. We do expect it to be open next Sunday. That means there's no coffee hour, so you'll have to go somewhere else for your coffee today. And, uh, but uh, we will hopefully have that back next week. Also, please do note that tomorrow the office will be closed as we celebrate the uh, national holiday of Juneteenth, um, which uh, recognizes the um, freedom of slavery in Texas as the last slaves heard that they were free so many years ago. What a wonderful day to celebrate, and I encourage you to do so. The baby bottle boomerang ends today. And so hopefully you brought your baby bottle back uh, with some, some funds in it. And uh, you can put those in the narthex, and there's some boxes back there, and that's where they go. If, you, if yours is still at home, sitting on your counter or whatever it will be, uh, you can bring it sometime this week and, uh, over at the office, and uh, we'll make sure it gets to um, the place where it goes. The uh, drive through prayer is this Saturday, June 25th, from 9 a.m. to noon. Uh, all are invited to come out and be a part of this, praying for folks in our community, holding signs and, and getting the good news out. So we invite you to be a part of that, whether it's for the whole three hours or just uh, a period of time that you're able to. But that's from 9 to noon, and we invite you to be a part of that. The food drive continues this month. Uh, today is Mac and Cheese Sunday. Next Sunday is cereal. And uh, so thank you for uh, your generosity in, in helping uh, folks in our community um, with food. One Blood Bus will be here next Sunday, June 26, uh, between the hours of 8 and noon. If you would like to give blood, please, uh, there is a, there's a sign up if you want a particular time in the narthex uh, for next Sunday. You can put your name on there, and uh, as the big uh, red bus will be here for that. Um, they also take walk-ups, so, um, but just to let you know, that, uh, that'll be here next week. And one last thing. Um, Independence Day barbecue. You know, we had so much fun on our last barbecue. We're going to do it again. And uh, that's going to be on July 3rd at 11.30 a.m. Hamburgers and hot dogs will be provided. Bring a side dish to share. And uh, we'll have the new floor and the hall, and it'll be a wonderful time. Um, so Independence Day barbecue coming up on July 3rd, and we'll spend some time together. Also, thanks for your prayers uh, over the last week as... Uh, I traveled up to Nashville for a conference up there. It was all about the prayer book and the history and so forth. I know you're deeply interested in all of that, but um, I am. I thought it was great. Um, and uh, so, but I had a wonderful, safe trip and travels up there. So thank you for your prayers. This coming week, in fact, I'll leave today with my, with my family. Um, I will be out of the office this week as well as I travel down to Camp Wingman to be a chaplain uh, for the elementary camp down there. And uh, so uh, say your prayers as I spend the next uh, six days with 40 <laughs> elementary kids. So, um, but it's fine. Are there any other announcements? Are there any birthdays today or this week? If so, please do come over here. It's Pam's birthday. Let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant as she begins another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessings. Happy birthday. Are there any wedding anniversaries today or this week? If so, do come forward. Yes, my wife and I will. Tara will be at the next one. So, oh, yeah. yeah, so. How many years? Uh, 22. 22 years? 
In 27 years. All right. Let us pray. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. And raise them up when they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Happy anniversary. You may now kiss your bride. <laughs> Are there any travelers today or this week? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and a sacrifice to God. continues with Holy Eucharist Prayer 1, found on page 333 in the Book of Common Prayer, page 333. The Lord be with you. Yes. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, in our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord. Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, creator of the light and source of life, who has made us in thine image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel if you are able. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father. 
for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that, his precious death and sacrifice, until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that, by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, 
that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. like to receive prayers of healing for yourself or for someone you know, please come forward at this time.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always.